know what it is. I'm Miguel Brown, Mr. Change Your Mind, Change Your Life. And no, it's not hump day as you looking at me. It's midweek medicine day, and I got that dose for y'all. Let's dive into it, all right? Two scenarios. Pay attention, listen up, and we're going to keep on rolling. First one, you got a husband and a wife. And in this situation, let's just say they've been married about six years. I don't know, just throwing something out there. And things are going good. Eventually, let's say they start having problems in the bedroom. The husband, you know, after some time, recognizes the problems that he feels they're having and begins voicing his concerns to his wife. Right? And... After a while of speaking to his wife the way that he feels he can, because men don't always articulate the best way, um, he begins to go silent because he feels like the wife isn't really paying attention no matter how many times he says it to her, no matter how many ways he says it. Even after some arguments, it just seems as if the wife isn't listening. Now, on the other side of that, the wife has some things that she's concerned about and that she feels that they need to address. But because the husband has some has his own concerns, when they talk, they're just yelling their concerns at each other and they're bumping heads with no solution and things aren't getting done. So because of that, the husband gets tired of talking and he goes, he starts going silent and in his silence, because he's not talking no more, the situation is not solved, even though it seems as if they kind of brushed it under the, under the couch and they're still living out their days. They both have these issues that aren't being talked about because wife is still trying to talk about her problems, but because husband is so fed up and he's in silent mode now, even when he's saying, I hear you, he doesn't hear and because wife has her issues and she feels they're not being uh, considered or worked on, she's not hearing the husband. So in this shutdown, they both start developing these inner thoughts, these thoughts that are negative, they're cancerous to their marriage. Because the husband is having bedroom problems, he starts everything that has anything to do with his wife cheating that's what he sees he's in the shows that he watched around his friends whatever the scenario may be but it's planting a negative seed in him and rather than still talking and confronting his wife and just bringing these things out so it's, it it doesn't cause an internal problem because he doesn't realize what's happening he has actually pushed himself out the door and stepped outside of his marriage and done the wrong thing Wife finds out it gets really messy and ugly because they already had situations going on that they failed to communicate. So now you end up in a bad divorce and it's just, it's too late. The mar a, mar a marriage was lost when all it took was for the right kind of communication. And even if needing help to communicate the problems, getting that help, but that wasn't done. Another scenario, got a teenage girl in school, high school, right? Um, pretty good in school. Doesn't has doesn't have any problems outside of that. Teenagers even kind of active. Does different things. Um, at some point, for whatever reason, she has a problem with her friends. Uh, let's say it started because some he he say she say type stuff, and it is causing her drama. And you got a group of girls that's just constantly messing with her, verbally abusing her. The girl decides to remain silent. She doesn't flip out or lose her cool or anything she's actually standing strong within herself and keeping herself and her emotions in check so that she can still do what she needs to do throughout the day in school but at the same time without avoiding any issues that could make the situation worse now that it takes a strong individual to do that because you, you have you're taking a beat like it's that's literally like you, you you chained up and you're taking lashes on the back because there's nothing you can do. And really she could do something, but she's maintaining herself and keeping her and, and, and choosing to keep her calm to handle the situation. After some weeks of taking this, it's a turnaround and her silence pays off because now 
she's in a situation where she can actually talk with these girls and they actually figure out that what they thought was the problem wasn't the problem and they can go back to being friends, which is a beautiful thing. In these two stories, I want you to think, I, I kind of did the extreme here. Um, like two different scares. You got one thing where it was completely ended and another thing where it worked out good. So I think about that proverb that we've all heard a thousand times, if not more, silence is golden. And the, the, the concept behind silence is golden is that it's value and wealth in choosing the right times to remain quiet and not be so quick to speak. That's biblical. Um, that good things actually come out of silence. And it does. You know, you, you gain wisdom, understanding. Um, there's opportunity in silence. There's situations where um, you can better yourself, growth. Um, you can study better. It's just, it's, it, it, it has, being silent has a lot that you can help yourself with um, and those around you. But then I want to throw something else at it because in my study about that concept, there's actually more to the proverb. And that in the proverb actually goes, speech is silver, silence is golden. We don't ever hear the beginning part of that proverb no more, but I want to focus on that today. Because these situations, one where if their silence killed the marriage. If they had been speaking, they could have saved it. The other, the girl's silence helped the situation. Now, in a lot of scenarios these days, let's look at the girls, the teenage girl situation where the silence actually helped. There's situation nowadays, and we're seeing it, teen suicide, things like that, where the silence is golden, isn't isn't is it working? We actually need that silver for the speech because you have people feeling like, and you can see this in the husband and wife scenario, where they, they get tired of talking. Not even that they get tired of talking, they feel like people aren't listening or taking them serious. So rather than keep talking about the same thing, they start bottling up. And the more they bottle those negative feelings up and those thoughts, it develops more negative, more negative. And then you, the mindset comes up that, well, if nobody listening, I need to do something to get their attention. And then that's when you have the extreme situations of people taking their lives, causing pain to themselves, causing pain to others, when really all you needed was to get to the right people to continue to speaking to help yourself. And sometimes that just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen at all. So I want us to take away one thing from this is that, yes, there is value in your silence. It can help you in many ways. But when it's time for you to speak, get the courage enough to speak and continue speaking until your voice is heard. More importantly, continue speaking until you're free from whatever demons are, 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 are ailing you, whatever's, you know, the situation in your life, whether it's in your marriage, whether it's at home, whether it's uh, with your friends, at work. Think about it. You could have had an opportunity at work to either get a promotion, a bonus, or be recognized by the, by the, the big wigs, but because you, and rather than speaking, somebody else took that opportunity and they got what you could have had. And now, instead of seeing where you should have spoke up, you you look at them, are jealous, and then you create a situ another situation. You start devaluing yourself. I'm not good enough. I didn't deserve that anyway. I should be experiencing what I'm experiencing. Nobody else cares. Why should I care? I'll just bottle it up, and then whatever happens, happens. Let's not be that. So with this, I say to you, it's okay to be silent. But then at the same time, you got to know when to speak and how to speak. And if you can't speak on your own, get with the right people to help you speak and communicate what you need to communicate so that you can come out on top and you can continue growing and you continue experiencing life. 
So I close with this one thing. The proverb is, speech is silver, silence is golden. I say silence is golden, but sometimes it doesn't speak loud, loud enough. Because that silence, that thin line between you speaking and being silent, could one day mean life and death for yourself, or life and death for somebody close to you. Once again, I'm Miguel Brown. Another dose on your Wednesday. Follow me on YouTube and subscribe. I love y'all. Be blessed. And I'll check y'all later. All right? I'm done.